Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, I want to show you how to use the reciprocal quotient and the Pythagorean identities to find non-permissible values and then to use them to simplify and prove expressions. All right, so what is a trigonometric identity? It is in a trig equation that is true for all permissible values of the variable in the expression on both sides of the equation. So let me show you what a trig identity looks like. So here are three. Uh, we have the reciprocal quotient and the Pythagorean identities. So the first three you actually know already. So we have cosecant x and that equals 1 divided by sine x. Secant x is 1 divided by cos x. And cotangent x is 1 divided by tan x. So all the values that we plug again for x, it would be true um, for both sides when we plug in a value. The quotient identities, the first one is tan x is equal to sine x divided by cos x. And since cotangent x is the reciprocal of tan x, then we also know that cotangent x is equal to cos x divided by sine x. And then lastly, the three Pythagorean identities are that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1, cotangent squared x plus 1 equals cosecant squared x, and 1 plus tan squared x is equal to secant squared x. All right, I'm going to show you how uh, the first one, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, comes about. So recall the unit circle with point P on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position. So let's place an angle in quadrant one. Radius is one since it's a unit circle. And we'll label this triangle x and y on the side with an angle of theta. So we know that cos theta is equal to x over one, which means that x equals cos theta. We know that sine theta is y over 1. So y equals sine theta. So now we have that this point P is cos theta sine theta. So we can fill this blank in over here. So now we can apply the Pythagorean theorem in the right triangle. So we get x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared according to the triangle. Substituting x and y with cos theta and sine theta, we get sine cos squared plus sine squared, oh, and this should be theta, equals 1. So when we write the squared, we usually put it in between the cos and the theta so that we don't avoid putting this as cos theta squared so that we don't know that it's theta that's squared or is it cos theta that's squared. So we can just rearrange this to be sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one, and that's how we get the first identity. Let's take a look at now how to find non-permissible values. So to determine the non-permissible values, you're gonna assess each trig function in the equation individually and examine expressions that may have non-permissible values. So you want to check where there are values for which the denominators are zero or the numerators are undefined. Now it helps to visualize the graph of each function to help you determine the non-permissible values. Let's take a look at an example. So determine the non-permissible values in degrees uh, for the equation cos theta equals cotangent theta divided by cos theta. Oh, and I put also for in radians. So let's do degrees and radians. All right, so what we have is on the left side, we have cosecant theta equals one divided by sine theta. So we know that sine theta can't equal zero. So theta can't equal zero degrees and 180 degrees, and that's because we know the graph of sine looks something like this. And we can also say that theta is equal to 
0 and pi. Okay. Therefore, the non permissible values are 0 or 180 degrees or 0 and pi. All right, let's take a look at the right side. So in the numerator, we can see that we have cotangent theta. So where is that undefined? So cotangent theta can be rewritten as 1 divided by tan theta, or it can also be written as cos theta divided by sine theta. So if we take a look at 1 over tan theta, we have tan theta cannot equal 0. So thinking about the graph of tan theta, which looks something like this, we know that occurs at 0 degrees and 180 degrees, or 0 and pi. If we take a look at the second equation, we have sine theta can't equal 0. But that's the same as what we have over here on the left. So I'm not going to rewrite that one. And besides, so far all we have is that for both cosecant theta and cotangent theta, we know that theta can't equal 0 or pi. So lastly, we're going to take a look at the denominator. We know that the denominator here, that cos theta can't equal 0. So taking a look at the cosine graph, this occurs right here. And that is at pi over 2. Oh, and actually, let's do this in degrees first, sorry. 90 degrees and 270 degrees, or at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So in total, the non-permissible values are 0 and 180 degrees and 90 and 270, or 0 and pi and pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Next, I want to show you how to verify a potential identity numerically. So when the expressions on either side of the equal sign are evaluated for any permissible value, then the resulting values are equal. If they're equal, we know that what you've written is actually true. So let's do an example. So given the equation cosecant theta equals cotangent theta divided cos theta, we're going to verify that this is true uh, by plugging in that theta is pi over 6. So I have cosecant theta equals pi over 6 equals cotangent pi over 6 divided by cos pi over 6. So because we're using pi over 6, let's draw our pi over 6 pi over 3 triangle. So I'm going to place pi over 6 down here. And this will be root 3 on the bottom, 1, and then 2. So taking a look at our right triangle, we have that cosecant theta pi over 6 is 2 over 1, because that's the reciprocal is sine. And then on the right side, we have cotangent pi over 6, so that would be root 3 over 1, divided by cos pi over 6, which is root 3, divided by 2. All right, so on the left side, we just have 2. On the right side, we have root 3 divided by root 3 over 2. So this is root 3 times 2 over root 3. We can see the root 3s cross off. On the left side, we have 2. And now on the right side, we also have 2. So that means that cosecant theta equals to cotangent theta divided by cos theta is true. Next, let's take a look at um, using identities to simplify and prove expressions. So let's take a look at these two expressions here, and let's do some simplifying. So how far do we know? Uh, how far do we go, I mean? So if we take a look at the first one, we know that tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta. So what you want to do is just to start plugging in some of the identities that we already know, and then seeing what happens. Cosecant theta we know is 1 divided by sine theta. So we can see in this expression, the sine thetas will cross off, and we're left with 1 divided by cos theta. And to make it even simpler, this would be secant theta. And then that's it. 
So taking a look at the second one, it doesn't seem like we can simplify, but what we want to do is we want to change our reciprocals to our primary trig function. So cosecant is one over sine theta. And then what we can do is we're going to join the fraction on the bottom in the denominator. So one plus one over sine theta is the same as sine theta over sine theta plus one. So we're getting a common denominator of sine theta to join the two values together. So this is the same as one plus sine theta for your numerator divided by sine theta plus one all over sine theta. And when we divide, remember we take the reciprocal. So we're gonna have one plus sine theta times sine theta over sine theta plus one. And again, you'll notice that the one plus sine theta crosses off with the sine theta plus one, and you're just left with sine theta. So that looks a lot simpler. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to prove identities. So here we have um, an identity that I want you to prove, and we're going to do this by drawing a chart. So we're going to have a left-hand side and the right-hand side. And when we're proving identities, we always want to work on the probably the harder side first. So in this case, this would be the left-hand side. So I'm going to rewrite the expression into my table. And let's proceed by looking at the left-hand side first. So we can see, I don't know if you can recall, if you have some of the memorized or the identities memorized, we can see that one plus tan squared theta is actually equal to secant squared theta. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite this as tan squared theta divided by secant squared theta. Now, if I rewrite this with a division symbol instead, horizontally like this, so tan squared divided by sine secant squared. Tan squared is sine squared theta over cos theta, sorry, cos squared theta divided by one over cos squared theta. And then switching this to multiplication, we have sine squared divided by cos squared divided by cos squared theta over one. And then our cos squared theta is nicely cancel off. And then we are left with sine squared theta on the left hand side, which equals sine squared theta on the right hand side, which is awesome. So sometimes people write Q E D, which means code rat demonstratum, which I think is Latin. And that means that which was to be demonstrated, which we proved. So let's take a look at another one. So again, I'm gonna draw my table, left-hand side and right-hand side. Now, I probably like to start usually with the side that has a fraction, okay? And try to prove it um, to the side that doesn't have the fraction. Now, I wanna show you for this one a little trick. So if I multiply, the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate, so one plus sine theta, the conjugate would be one minus sine theta, something will happen. So let me show you what happens here. So in the numerator, I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm actually not going to multiply it out. In the denominator, I get one, and then minus sine theta plus sine theta, so the middle terms cancel off and then I have minus sine squared theta. So again, one minus sine squared theta is actually one of the identities because sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. So one minus sine squared theta, so this whole part here, is actually equal to cos squared theta. So I'm gonna rewrite this as cos theta times one minus sine theta divided by cos squared theta 